I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Uh, you may remember if you've seen the episode we did a steam test on the boiler and that seemed to go reasonably okay. There's a couple of tweaks I need to do. This gland needs a little bit more packing but generally it was basically what I was looking for. Um, what I've been doing since is I've been doing a little bit of uh, consolidation work. I'm going to move that boiler there um, on the chassis. You may remember if you watched some of the previous videos, a couple of times I've mentioned we'll do this later on, that can be done a little bit later. Well, I've got round to the time where I've actually done some of these things now. Because what I've done is fitted on the front bogey wheel and fitted a cross member onto here and also fitted the, real, the rear uh, bogey on as well and fitted a cross member onto there. And also I've now mounted the axle pump uh, onto here as well and fitted a cross member. So this is all now nice and solid. I've also um, done a little bit of work on the fuel system and what you can see here is that's the rear plate and I've put a sump, a little sump fixed on here and that fits on fits onto here and what will eventually happen and we'll talk about it in more detail as we get closer is the fuel system but that's basically where the fuel tank will sit. The other thing I've done as well is I've made some basically what I call as quick release fittings if you like uh, for the foot plates for the running boards. All there is are just some screws that are held captive here and you may remember I put some of these little notches on here when we were building the foot plates, the, um, the running board. I put some of these when we were building the running board I put some of these notches on and the idea is that these can fit on when you're assembling the locomotive is these can fit on quite simply and quite easily and they slide onto there just slide onto these screws and it's just a case of nipping these screws up and then these are all nice and tight and that's a, a very easy way and very nice way of fitting them on because as the locomotive gets more and more complicated as it's assembled it can start to get quite awkward fitting some of these parts and there's going to be a, a bind to get some of these to get at some of the inner workings so I've made these the assembly of these as simple as possible so they fit on lock down and just tighten and it will be the same with these. These will fit on here. So let me just fit that on. Do that again. Let's loosen that off. Like that. Okay, that goes out. These fit on. This is when you have to start thinking about when you're building the locomotive is how easy is it to assemble and take apart because you don't want it so complicated that it becomes a nuisance to actually get at parts. So that all fits together on there and it will be the same the same for this one that fits on the side. I've been giving some thought now to the plate work. So if I drop the boiler in terms of where it's going to sit, smoke box sits on there and the boiler, I've done my sums right, the boiler will fit in there. Now one of the things I'm going to have is it's going to have working water tanks on. 
So there will be approximately here, there'll be there could be two of these, there'll be one here and there'll be one this side. What will fit in here is a little hand pump that you'll be able to fill the boiler from. Now in order to sort of determine the size of these water tanks I have to really work out the thickness of what this cladding is going to look like. So the other thing I've done is just made a rough template for the boiler cladding which will fit on which will fit on here. I'll choose a couple of elastic bands to hold this on. Actually these elastic bands almost represent the boiler bands that will be on there so this is a this is quite a nice little guide on there. If you imagine these are going to be the finished boiler bands that will fit on there. The boiler will be insulated and it will have a um, a brass sheet cladding that covers this. Let's drop another one on give the idea what they look like. And drop that one on there. Oops, I'll do it on a bit quicker. And so it'll have something like three boiler bands holding this cladding on. But this basically, this piece of cardboard, this is just to give me an idea of the size of sheet brass that I need to cut out. So that drops in here. The boiler sits at about uh, the boiler, yeah, the boiler sits at that position there. The water tanks will fit there. So this will give me an idea of how big to make these water tanks. One there. And I've also again just cutting bits of cardboard out started to figure out the size of the firebox cover that goes on. It will look something like that and if I get the outer the two other pieces so this outer plate fits there and this back plate fits here. I so say that now gives me an idea of what the plate work is going to look like. There's also another uh, rounded, little rounded fillet section that goes into here. But you can see now I've determined, whoops, let's get that right, I've determined where the these plates are going to go and the size of this plate work that fits on the back. So just as a, a little departure um, we shall transport ourselves over to a railway centre where we can have a closer look at the real things. It's really good to be able to visit this place and have a wander round and have a close look at these locomotives first hand. We're quite lucky here there's actually three prairie tanks of various classes. This is the particular one that we're interested in. It closely resembles the drawings that I have and it's really useful to have a close look at it and see some of the finer details. This bunker is particularly interesting because it has a double curve and that's going to be quite tricky to actually make and I'll have to give some thought on that as how this works and also you can see all the details of the pistons and the foot plates and some of the connecting gear as well dressmaking you come up with the, the pattern or the shape and it's a nice simple job just more or less to trace round the shape that we want and just cut along the line as they say 
I'm beginning the bend on here now and what I did do is I annealed this brush sheet just makes it a little bit softer so it's a process you've seen me do in previous videos with copper copper sheet you anneal them you just heat them up to a red and let them cool down naturally and it just takes a lot of the resistance and spring out of the metal for those of you who are wondering what annealing is and have maybe not seen it in the previous videos I'll just do it one more time so you can see what's going on just give this a big just gently heat this up to red Well, I'll just let that cool down naturally now. So one of the things with the kneeling is you can make sure. Just get that round there a little bit more. You have to just get it into shape gently. Sometimes I think it's worth maybe investing in some a little set of rollers to do this. Certainly make life a lot easier. So I'll give that another softening and carry on doing a little bit more bending. This is the material, or the strip that I'm going to use for the uh, the boiler band. So just sort of let you see that comes in a big long strip, about in a meter length, and we'll need about I think I think it's about three three boiler bands. So again, I'll just cut these to the length, bend them over for a little tab and put a 10BA screw through each end to tighten it down. Before we begin on the boiler bands, what I will do is I'll just take our template out and mark out for some insulation. This is um, boiler insulation material that I use. And I think in this instance we shall see how we go on with one mil as, a, as an insulation, as a rough idea where we're going. And just cut this out. You can just poke it through like that. Now with our with our sharp knife, scalpel knife, it's quite easy just to go round and just cut these excess pieces off. On the outer skin, and that just slides nicely over there. Perfect. Beautiful. That's it. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now we can go ahead. So we know what that thickness is. Just give you a look on here. And you can see there are our outer skin and the insulation. And with that thickness of the outer skin, it just about comes up, well, probably a 30 second just over 30 seconds short up to the bush which is fine. There's the first boiler band made and in position and just clamp together this end with a little 10 ba bolt through there. I will trim that bolt off to length when we're ready but that's just to give you an idea of what the outer cladding will look like. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is make the other boiler bands as well. So that's that part done then. I hope you liked this video. If you do, please hit the like button and press the subscribe button. And thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.